Welcome to Joshua Davidson Therapy. I am Joshua. The world has become stranger. It started last year, well, as much as anything can truly start, when we had unprecedented catastrophic bushfires. We've had bushfires in the past, and we know the beast quite well. An Australian scientist in 2007 predicted that by 2019, 2020, we would have worse fires than ever. And we did. These fires were so hot and so intense, they burnt through our mitigating factors the real-world life consequences to climate change that was hypothesized in 1880, proven in 1980, and we received the consequences in 2019. And we will continue to do so for a while. Listen to the science books. It's useful. Another thing that our scientists were warning us about was pandemics. We get them reasonably frequently, a bad one, roughly one every hundred years, warning shots every 30 years, and so on. SARS, swine flu, MERS, avian bird flu. It was just a matter of time. Each one of those were controlled by isolating it so it could not spread to the general populace. And as a consequence, some countries acted very well in order to make sure that the virus could not breach their borders and devastate their people. They followed the recommendations. Some countries did not. This virus is called COVID-19. It's a coronavirus. There's lots of information out there from scientific types about it. I'm not going to discuss the specifics of that. What I am going to discuss is the effect it's had on us. The world has changed. Change is hard for us humans. Change is something that is constant. It happens all the time. In fact, change is time. If nothing changes, there is no time. We live in the present, but we only process in the past. When I throw a ball to you, you'll see it leave my hands. But that sight is no longer accurate. The light from my hand reaches your eyeball in very fast time, not measurable by humans without special tools. By the time it is processed in your retina and gets to the part of your brain that creates the picture, it's a third of a second in the past. So if you act on that information as if it is now, you're behind. Seeing the ball leave my hands, you calculate where it's going to go so that you can get to where it's going to go before it gets there. You can then reach out and grasp that ball and hopefully catch it. Should you do so, you have grasped the ball before the sense of the impact has reached your brain. Because if we waited until we could feel it and then sent the signal, the ball has already bounced and you've missed. To catch the ball, a very simple thing. You've had to predict the future so that your reactions and actions occur in the real time now based on a calculation you made in the past. Confusing? Think about this. When you cross the street, you look right for the oncoming traffic, you look left at the other traffic just in case. You check back for the oncoming traffic, you now have two samples. You can now calculate when they are coming across so that you can see a safe space to cross the road. You don't cross as soon as you look because you could be wrong. And you haven't had time to process a prediction of when it is safe to cross the road. And that is fine so long as the vehicles continue to do what is predictable. But when you see a vehicle that is erratic, you pause, you step back and go to your safe space, and you recalculate. 
We are predicting the future all the time. We're future predicting machines. Imagine a six-sided dice in my hand. I'm going to roll it. Do you know what's going to happen? You're probably thinking of a number. One, two, three, four, five, six. And should it come up as one of those, you won't be surprised, even though you didn't know which number it was going to be. But if it came up as blueberry smell, you would go, huh? That doesn't make sense. For us, sense is what we expect to happen within a boundary of reasonable. You didn't know what was going to happen first, but you knew what it should be. And when it wasn't that, it was very odd. Magicians take advantage of this all the time. They lead us through a story, they give us some clues about what's coming next, and then they change it so that we are surprised. Delighted, because it's safe. <gasps> Where did the coin go? The woman was not chopped in half. How did you know what I was thinking? And yet, we are delighted for it. However, if something went very different, we would not be startled and delighted. We'd be startled and scared. When the change is beyond our prediction, beyond our environment, when it no longer makes sense, we are startled or surprised. We have to reassess. And it should startle us. That is the process of our brain going, wait, my prediction has failed. Why? And once we know why, we can now factor that in and make a new prediction, a new plan of action. We can act. We can change. What happens when it keeps breaking? We enter crisis. We don't know what to do anymore. This virus isn't just a small thing going through. It's making lots of change in the world. It's turning everything on end. People who have never worked at home are now working at home. People who are used to a steady and regular job have found themselves unemployed through no reason of their own and no fault of the economy. There's no reasonable way for most people to predict this. It has come from outside of our prediction and changed so many things. All of the students who already learnt from home are going, what's the difference? But every student who was used to going to school is having to grapple with technology as other teachers. How do we do this? What's the new normal? Normal is based on what usually happens. But what usually happens is no longer happening. If this was it forever, we would adjust. But how much energy and time are you going to put into making this the new normal? when eventually this must change. We keep hoping for new normal for us to work with, but it's not happening. And that's because the situation is changing, it's evolving, it's moving forwards. We want to know when will this end, but we don't. We want to know what we have to do to survive this, but that has been sketchy poorly transmitted to us, and it changes every now and then as we learn new things. You might recognize some of these feelings. You have the feeling that you're supposed to be doing something. Something you can do will change this and fix this, but it can't. But you still feel like you should do something, but there's nothing more to do. So you look for something to do. Maybe I should Get stuff. Do things. No. The correct thing to do is actually wait. We keep hoping for a miracle solution. Like, what if they find a cure? We have. It's called a vaccine and it's going to take 18 months. But what if they find a chemical we could take that will just kill the virus? My plan for paying my mortgage should not be to buy the winning lotto ticket. There is a winning lotto ticket out there somewhere. I just have to buy that one, right? My plan for paying the mortgage should be earn enough money to pay the mortgage. 
And if I happen to win Lotto, that's great, but not the plan. For people who are planning on a miracle cure for COVID-19, you're looking for a Lotto win that is just not feasible. If it happens, that'd be great, but that shouldn't be the plan. Here is another one that you might recognize. You just want to sleep all the time. Wanting to sleep is a way of traveling through time to get to the other end. If there's not a thing I need to do now, then your body decides that it should sleep now to get to the other side. But that doesn't work. Sometimes we'll mistake this for depression. But no, it's just cabin fever. Most people, when locked in, after they've tried doing a few things, realize there's nothing to do, so they sleep. It's natural. It is important to stay occupied. Don't give in to that sleep. But the feeling is normal. And having a nap here and there is probably going to be good for you. Perhaps you've noticed that you keep snacking. Partly, you're bored. Eating just fills in time. Partly, you're comfort eating. It feels good to eat, and we need to feel good right now. And on a short-term basis, that's okay. But over 18 months, we're going to have problems. Try to avoid that. Realize when you open the fridge or the cupboard. Here's another one that you might recognize. You may notice that you have been narky, a bit angry, a bit agitated, a bit reactive. That's also normal. It's not good, but it is normal. Take a breath. Realize that you are just feeling out of control because this thing is not stopping. And you're not in charge. You're out of control. Take a breath. Calm down. Go back to it. Calm. You may have also noticed that everything is taking a long time. You used to be able to get lots of things done in a day, but now it's hard. Not only is it difficult to work at home, if you're not used to it, with family members around that you're not used to, it's also difficult to go and get groceries. The complexity has just risen so high. You need to make sure you dress appropriately for outside. You need to be hyper vigilant and conscious of everything you touch and avoid touching your face. You need to wash everything when you get it home, your clothes, yourself, and then all the things you touched so that they are safe. So you don't bring it back with you. You may experience feeling lost. Who we are is often based on what we do and what we have been doing has changed. We also base who we think we are on some accepted fundamental aspects like I work or I look after the family or I do these things that are valued this much. And we're seeing everything change, which means the thing you were basing who you thought you were on is no longer true. We have noticed many things about our society that are uncomfortable, that have been exposed by this situation. The pleas from our politicians to continue to send our children to school because at least that is safe compared to home ignores the fact that at the end of the school day, the children have to go home. Why have we done nothing about this unsafe home situation? That's not a new thing. It's just a thing that has been exposed. We expect that domestic violence is going to go on the rise. Partly because everyone is stressed and thus it's easier to excuse aggressive behaviour. But it's not an excuse. Don't do it. But also because the victims of violence can't escape. But you can. We'll do another video about that.